Welcome to this week's Artist on Art. I have the great pleasure to be speaking with Robbie Schoen. He is the gallery owner and director mm -hmm. of the Felix Culpa in downtown Santa Cruz, right off Pacific Avenue, right behind Streetlight Records. It's a great pleasure to be talking with you, Robbie. I love your gallery space. Thank you. It's a great place. It's, it's totally happening. They have been some, like, raging first Fridays here. Um, how long have you owned the gallery space? Uh, I think I'm in my ninth year now. Nine years yeah. since this first opened. And well, it opened actually about 13 years ago, I think. I see, in yeah. this space. Uh -huh. And the Felix Culpa is named after a person? Uh, Felix Culpa is Latin. It means uh, guilty pleasures. Ooh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And so this is a gallery space. Um, we're going to be talking with Gloria Alford, who's uh, the current uh, installation, installed artist. And, uh, but first I wanted to talk with you about the Felix Culpa. Not only do you have uh, installations and exhibitions of artists, but you do some other things, don't you? Yeah, we have um, poetry readings from the New Cadence uh, Poetry Series. We have readings from the University of uh, California at Santa Cruz. They come down and, and use the space. And there's also a private, not I'd say private, I'd say uh, events here that are open to the public. And it happens all the time. Do you also used to have life drawing? Yes, I don't do that anymore. You don't do the life drawing anymore? No. There's other places to I go I did that for, for about three years. And yeah. That's good. So you have the poetry readings, you have the exhibitions, mm -hmm. and you also have your own sculptural garden, is that correct? Are those your sculptures? I do fountains out there, and I have some odds and ends uh, yeah. out there. Yeah, I'm hoping we get to walk around with uh, you, because I love your work. Oh, thank you. Um, you have a fountain for... Um, the late Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling us how you put that sculpture together? Well, the computer uh, it, that's uh, perched on top of a street lamp base out there, that's, that's the fountain that we're describing. It's a, a, an Apple II computer on top of a turn-of-the-century street lamp base. And uh, I did that sculpture uh, a few years ago when Steve Jobs was running the next company that he had before he took over Apple. And I invited him to buy it. Uh, so that, that was about, I don't know, what was that, like 20 years ago or something? And so he didn't buy it, because that's why we get it. That's why it's still here. <laughs> well, lucky us. Yeah. Yeah. And then, when he pa and then I turned it into a fountain uh, before he passed away. And then when he passed away, I put his portrait around it. So it's constantly evolving. Ah. Yeah. That's great. Right. And so did you study art? I was always the class artist from a very young age. I mean, I was always painting before I even started to go to school. I was painting and, then, and drawing. And then I, when I went to school, I was always the class artist. And that went on forever. And then uh, when, it came to, when I got to the university, I was uh, a little sick of it. And uh, so uh, I... Uh, started working in people's homes and businesses using my hands to uh, create, to enhance their spaces. Am I still answering the question? Yes, so, you are. You know, I, so I could never escape working with my hands and being very artistic and creative. And, and even though I was tired of it, uh, by the time I was in the university, shortly after that, uh, I was, all, all, it seems to me I've always been an artist. So there is that um, philosophy that you can't really teach someone to be an artist, that they're, um, that in some ways it possibly can influence that person's creative voice in a way that is not authentic to them. And so many artists' paths have been to find mentors or to, to teach themselves mm -hmm. so that they don't have that imprinting of, you know, the university, the mm -hmm. academia. And then even within there, there is, you know, if you are going to study, then you either completely 
learn to mimic the masters mm -hmm. and then move on to your own voice mm -hmm. or you continue on with your own voice but with some you know couching on how they're influenced like you know that they're not sat down and said all right this is how you make pink with your oil paints you mm -hmm. experiment and figure out your own pink basically yeah. If you're lucky, if you're you lucky. get there. That's a good, it's a good point because when I was growing up, I always sought out artists who were better than I. Even though I was the class artist, I said, I, there were always better artists than I was in school. And I would seek them out and I would hang out with them as long as I could. And then in the last, in the last few years, uh, I, I'd say I, I met Michael Leeds, who is an incredible artist. I met him maybe 30 years ago. And that kind of brought me to the present day where he was he, very instructive. I mean, he's like 10 artists in one and I consider him my mentor. And uh, he's the reason why I'm running this gallery. And so mentorship is really important. I didn't really have that in, in school, you know, uh, too much. But later on, uh, lately, it's it's been really important just because it leads you to these places that you never thought you'd go to, which are really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you choose who's going to be your, your artist for the gallery space? Or artists, I've seen group shows here also. Oh, a lot of people are, I'm, people are always coming to see me about and wanting, wanting to have shows. And I look at their work and uh, I have a lot of shows that are annual shows here. Uh, people have come to me with their groups, and I have shown them for s many, for uh, most of the time that I've been here. The Monterey Peninsula College, uh, a, a group called the Community of Artists, they have shows every year. I have a show every year uh, that is a neon show, and then in between that, you know, I, I try to find uh, artists and shows that are exciting to me, and. Uh, it's not easy. How do I do it? Um, gosh, I'm always trying to figure out new ways of how to do that. So is it like juggling balls and, you know, having some interest that needs the right time for it to happen? I think so. A lot of, a lot of these shows, I, I wait several years before they finally happen. I want them to be successful. So I think that's why I'm giving them this gestation period. I'll keep in touch with these artists. Eventually they'll have, they'll have their shows and... Uh, I just hope that uh, it's, it's always building towards uh, every, year after year getting better and better. That, they, I, that I'd like to be selling uh, more art uh, as each year goes by. That's my objective. I'm not too comfortable with uh, having a party and a good time. I'm interested in selling art. And that, uh, you know, that's something uh, that is, uh, uh, it's a, I'm not sure it's in a book. I, I have this funny feeling. It's a you tough have to business. Kind of feel that one out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what uh, drew you to Gloria Alfred's work. Uh, well, I had a show of Gloria's here two and a half years ago, and uh, I love Gloria's work. And um, what is it that you love about her work? I like the process that she uh, describes in making it, where she never knows where she's going. She just starts creating, and. Uh, and then finally she gets there and she really, uh, she loves the way her work turns out. I, I like it. I like her approach, I like her personality. So I, I decided to have an, a show again. Yeah, it's beautiful. She has um, one room of the gallery is with her really brightly colored mm -hmm. paintings and then the front room is, uh, I'd say her golden, she has, uh, she uses a lot of gold in, mm -hmm. her, in her work. Yeah, she calls, I believe Gloria calls it the kimono series. The kimono. There's a lot of kimono series there. There's a couple in this room too to kind of mix it up. But yeah, there's two different, yeah, people who come in, they'll go, oh, uh, how many artists are here? And I'll say, well, this artist, it's all the same, same artist. And they go, well, it's so different in the other room. Right. I go, well, yeah. Well, she's a mature artist mm -hmm. and has quite, <laughs> quite a, uh, 
ensemble of paintings that she's been working on and continues. I mean, some of these she works on for years. Yeah, this is just a fraction of what she has created. Yeah. You know, she was into, in the 70s, she, she was into... Uh, Digital the, printing uh -huh, and, and uh, printing pla plastics. That's right. And the Jade Princess. Uh-huh. Made out of... Circuit boards. Circuit boards. Right. That's a really beautiful piece. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. You're uh, doing Go Gloria Alford, um, the big... I know you just mentioned that you're not in it for the party, but you do have some really great First Fridays mm -hmm. <laughs> parties here. Um, this will be... Is that the kind of opening celebration for, mm -hmm. for Gloria, which would be June 6th? Is it the 6th or is it the 7th? It's June 7th, sorry. Okay, that's all right. June 7th, Friday, June 7th. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Saturday. Right, Saturday. all the shows here have receptions on the first Friday. And then her work will be here for the next month? Yeah, till the 30th of, uh, of June. And then July, do you have anyone picked for July? I have Peter Koronakos. Uh, he was here last July doing his uh, A to Z uh, found object art or strange assemblage animals. Nice. Do you remember that? He, he works at <laughs> Roaring Camp Railroad and uh, he creates uh, animals. This is what he did last year. He creates these animals and people love that show. Great. Yeah. Great. So it's we'll getting to the point, fortunately, where uh, a lot of these shows are selling at least a third of the artwork that's in the show, which to me, I'm, I'm really grateful for. Wonderful. I'm, I'm hoping in another two years that good sh good, these shows will sell half of their work. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe by my 14th or 16th year, I'll maybe have a sellout. <gasps> let's, let's go for that. Yeah, so. <laughs> let's, let's all pray. <laughs> Robbie Schoen. I've been speaking with Robbie Schoen. He is the gallery owner and director of the Felix Culpa, one of the best galleries here in Santa Cruz. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Anytime. Oh. I'm going to get you back on. So All right, okay. <laughs> we're going to do a full on oh, okay, full cool, show. Cool. Um, please stay tuned. Up next will be uh, Gloria Alford and Robert Sard. <laughs>